Well, we could wait, but I think we should just try and start. I'm sure some people will join us a little bit late, uh, but we're very grateful to Lena and the whole team for providing us with lots and lots of things to share. Um, so I think if the sooner we start, we'll be able to um, see all of these interesting things. Uh, my name is Simon Duffy. I'm based in England, um, in the city of Sheffield, and I'm hosting the conversation or the webinar. Um, the, I also run something called Citizen Network, which is a global community to support inclusion and citizenship. And so this project, Day Centres Without Walls, which is funded by Erasmus Plus, we're, we're running it through Citizen Network and we will share this information out, not just across Europe, but across the whole world. Um, so hopefully some people, we had some people from New Zealand who wanted to join, but in the end with the delay time, they went back to bed um, and they, they'll watch the film. So we have um, interest from all around the world. Uh, Day Centres Without Walls is a really important new initiative, um, which is an attempt to help us take day centres, which sometimes can be segregated and removing people, and turn them inside out. So they become communities that change communities, that they enable people with disabilities to become active citizens, um, not just on their own, but sometimes working together in their community. And uh, we've already had some really great examples from Lithuania of, of things like solidarity coffee and, and teaching professionals about people with intellectual disabilities uh, by people with intellectual disabilities. So we've already seen some very inspiring examples um, and I'm sure we'll learn some more today. Um, again, I, we will be doing this talk because it's a full talk. If you can put questions in the chat bar, if you're not familiar with Zoom, then that's at the bottom of your screen. I think if you're looking on a desktop and it's just a little chat box, click that and you'll see um, text at the side and then you can add questions to that. And at the end of the presentations, I will try and take those questions and ask them out. Lena has also provided a certificate for anybody on this webinar to, as a qualification you can share. Um, we need to send that to you by email. So either put your email address in the chat bar and we'll send it to you. Or if you don't want to send an email to the Citizen Network email address, which I've also put in the chat. And I'll do that again towards the end of the meeting. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Is that, yeah, thumbs up from Susanna, that's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, mostly we're going to, apart from the speaker, we're going to be on mute for most of this talk and I can kind of control that from here. Um, if I just um, do that now. And what I can now just begin maybe by unmuting Lena. And Lena, you're going to introduce us to maybe Lithuania and anything else that you want to uh, share with us. Okay. Hello everybody. I hope uh, you are well, healthy and with some strong spirit to continue working and fighting for the well-being of our students, our users. And uh, it's pity now we cannot uh, travel physically, but uh, I am inviting you to some uh, 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 to some uh, visit to visit Lithuania 
uh, and to see how our country looks like. So welcome to the So welcome to Lithuania. Thank you so much, Lena. Do you want to say just a little bit about the organization that you lead as well? Uh, yeah, we are daycare center to, uh, for uh, um, intellectually disabled young people. And uh, they are coming here like they are going to the work. Uh, they are coming in the morning and staying all day here and they are doing a lot of activities. Uh, today is different situation. Uh, all our students at home, but uh, we as social workers, we are providing uh, uh, activities them and uh, making them occupied at home. And our team is ready to share their best experience what they are doing during this hard COVID time. Thank you. And in that lovely film, I saw a bar where I had beer once. So, um, right. So next, uh, Hol Holita. So am I saying that right? Holita. Uh, where is Holita on the screen now? We have so many faces. Holita, where are you? I've, uh, I've unmuted you. So. Hello. Hello. Hello for everybody. Okay, Pepper. We're ready. Okay. Don't don't sit on on the sofa. Move. Quarantine, you or on lockdown. What do you think? Do our students prefer to sit on the sofa or exercise? Sofa, definitely. Yeah. Of course, on the sofa. Sofa, potato chips, and the good movie. <laughs> yes, you are right to sit on the sofa. How we motivate students to do exercise? We developed an easy to use and easy to understand method. This is a six step method. Each student has its own individual sport program. Now you can see what an individual monthly program looks like. Throughout the month, they have to do five exercises a day from Monday to Friday. Now I will explain how they use this program. So step number one, reminder. Twice per day, the students receive a reminder on their mobile phones. The purpose not to miss the time and not to forget to do exercise. Step number two, exercises encoded in a QR code. The student scans the QR code on an individual sport program. Step number three, watching exercise. The students watch the video of the exercise. The purpose to remember how to perform this exercise. Now you will see what is encoded under the QR code. Let's go to move the dog with us. You are ready? I do support.
exercises can be watched on the phone, PC, or TV on the YouTube channel. Okay, so first step exercising. The exercises are short and complicated, taking everyone's physical abilities into account. You saw one of the exercises in the video. Step number five, self-assessment. After the exercise, the students make a mark. One mark equals to one point. If the students cannot complete the exercise, he or she marks the exercise as not completed. And step number six, reward. Weekly, monthly, and annual rewards to the best results. So, let's repeat all the steps. First step, reminder. Second step, QR code. Third step, watching exercise. Third step, exercise. Fifth step, self-assessment. And sixth step, reward. So, why did we develop this method? Because the method of integrating IT into the sport Increasing the independent self-confidence of students, students are gaining skills to use IT and to be physically active. We hope that you have your very own individual sport program. Then you are on the right path. Thank you. Thank you, Holita. That's brilliant. Okay, so we're doing very well on time. So great job. Um, so next it's uh, Eva um, who's going to talk about Let's Learn. So Eva. Yeah, hello everyone. So I will show you presentation. Let's learn. Of course, in quarantine time, our students learned a lot. They were improved by themselves, but then they can do distance tasks. Parents also very involved in tasks. They also have the opportunity to improve together during quarantine. And of course, it's opportunity to learn a lot and improve by ourselves for us, for staff. Students who is comfortable using their computer and those who want to perform tasks using IT. This is how individual tasks are presented. For example, most review video calls to look information in internet, make movie about your day, photography, crosswords, and so on. Not everyone of our students can use IT. Not everyone have computers or internet and not everyone likes to do tasks with computer. So for those students who don't want to do tasks with computer, we send tasks by post office. For example, how to count the money, thematic tasks for Easter, crosswords, easy reading tasks, and so on. And then they are very happy to receiving letters. Before quarantine, our students doesn't know how to download and play a games, but now it's games what they were like, and one of example is eGame Uno. Uh, students have learned to download and use video applications such as Zoom, Skype, and Messenger. These programs make it easier for students to plan activities not only during quarantine, but also after it ends. Students not only communicate with each other in the GDC community in distance, but they also participate in distance learning. For example, participation in a training of the European Solidarity Corps for Solidarity Project Promoters. Parents of students learning as well. Most parents had the mails but didn't use them much. It was a challenge for them to learn how to send videos, photos this way, but it overcame the challenge. And before the quarantine period, parents to pay the bill on paper way, but are now submitted electronically. 
it was some parents uh, who was first time paid a bill and for some parents who helped to do it and now they see it very comfortable way most parents use the, the messenger app only for correspondence but now they have learned to both make calls and film or take pictures using this app like you've seen the pictures uh, staff learning as well too during quarantine time, we not uh, only organize these activities for the students or does documentary work, but we also learning each other uh, in Microsoft Team program. It has become a tradition. We lead them every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. and we have one hour for this. This program included training on the following topics like how to use protection and disinfect, about heredity, uh, the effect of emotions on our body, how to work in the team. We have some sport topics. We had step aerobic. We involve in our pets. We had pet therapy. We had the topic harmony and peace, a great foundation for a hard day. In this topic, we not only learned a lot of new things, but we also have opportunity to relax. So I suggested for you just sit, watch it, listen it, and relax. Pranėsim meditaciją. Dabar visi giliai įkvėpiam ir iškvėpiam. I hope you had a great time and relax. And like you see in the presentation during quarantine time, learning and students and parents and staff. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Eva. Very good. Again, with how are we doing the time? Brilliant. You're, you're gonna creating time as you do this so so exactly. So um, now, uh, Dovile, Dovile, where is Dovile? Oh, hello, Tol. I hope you're not tired. And uh, today I will talk about how we at GDC celebrated the holidays and about the implementation of our students' ideas. So I start by talking about how we celebrate holidays during quarantine. So let's celebrate. During this Easter, the whole GDC community was separately safely welcoming this holiday at their home, but it felt like we were celebrating them all together. In this slide, you see our students, students greetings to GDC community. Students shared photos on social networks and private groups as they prepared for the special day. They were group conversations and the banquet table and interactive beating of eggs. And here you also can see our students' colored Easter eggs. During the quarantine, we went to greet five students and three employees whose birthdays were in April. Following all quarantine recommendations, 
handling with face masks, disposable gloves, keeping a safe distance and communicating for no longer than 15 minutes. We gave birthday presents, brightened the mood and gave non-traditional birthday weather emotions and show for students attentiveness, love and proof that we don't forget their celebrations. Our students also film greetings to their friends, wishing them everything very much. It is great that students and their parents are involved in preparing the greetings. And in this slide, you can see the GDC employees and their joy uh, with the gifts they received from the team. I want to offer for you a look how the employees going to homes to greet one of the students. <music> So the next topic is the implementation ideas and initiatives. The pajamas party, which has already become a tradition for the GDC community, was not been forgotten this spring either. In slightly different circumstances, but with the help of technologies and good mood, we organized the pajama party. The party was attended by nine students, four staff and three volunteers. All participants in the pajama party were safe in their homes. Here you can see moments from this pajama party. During the party, all its participants presented their homework, short performances created by them. They were actors, singers, dancers, and more. After that, there were fun tasks that everyone had to do in a good faith. We ended the party with a joint song. Even before quarantine, one group of students planned to bake the cake together. Since we no longer meet at GDC, we decided to do it at home by making a video call. In this slide, you can see how one of the students is preparing to make a cake. Here you see photos from the cake making process. We did the whole cooking process step by step exactly according to the recipe. As you can see from the photos, we bake it three very beautiful and delicious cakes uh, which we later eat together over a cup of tea by ringing through the Messenger app. Students felt proud and said it was one of the tastiest cakes they ever eaten. It's great to have students realize during quarantine to encourage employees to implement their ideas and initiatives by working together in, all in distance. One of the members of the GDC Students Council take over the organization of a future return event. Involved other students in joint activities create a closed messenger group for communication. All students were asked to offer their ideas and what the event should look like, what its name might be. Everyone made suggestions. It was decided to name the event Quarantine Plus Home Equal Welcome Back to GDC for sure. Students had homework assignments. Video calls are made to present the completed homework for the upcoming event. Anyone can express their opinion, suggest changes, or just participate here and now just as observer. By implementing their ideas, students have the opportunity to express themselves, improve their IRT skills, and participate in joint activities with other friends of the center. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay, again, we're doing very, very well here. So now it's Vermanta is going to talk us about a, growing an international movement. Hello, everyone. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> You're, you're a little bit quiet, Vermanta. Okay. Your <laughs> so, okay. I will.
Yeah, I don't know what happened. Sorry, William. Okay. Wait a little. Okay, I will check. It's okay. Okay, thank you for your waiting. Okay, while we have quarantine, quarantine and we cannot go to other countries, we have reminded a part of international life. So, can you guess what does it mean and in what language is it written in? Maybe it's in Japanese. Ring. Water in China. Okay. Christmas tree in Japan. Okay. Ada, what do you think? Be active. <laughs> okay. So all your guests can be correct because uh, what you say, we can say in one word, peace. And is it in Japan language? Why did I ask you? Our students had a competition where we guessed like you. What the word written in Japanese mean? And our students are participating in the Paralimp Art World Cup 2020. The World Cup is an event to show of the talent of many disabled people uh, from around the world. The motto on this year is peace. All information you can find at this link. You can see this link. And our students uploading drawing, uh, drawings and photos to Facebook. And your students can also participate in this competition. Was it easy for our students to understand Japanese? Definitely not. They just guess it. Is it easy for our students to understand about the coronavirus? Of course not. I won't ask you. Is it easy for your students to understand about coronavirus? No, no, it's so difficult. No. But, um, they are um, strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here you cannot guess. Here you, you have to know for sure. And we create an information document in an easy to read and understand format. Everything about coronavirus, all about social distance, what is social distance and how to keep social distance, how to connect to the Microsoft Teams system and communicate with other people, and all information about the coronavirus uh, and easy to understand language uh, can be found on the GDC website and on the Facebook page. And on the website Inclusive Europe. This is a link. From the beginning, information has not available in Lithuania. We created the document and sent it to Inclusive Europe organization. Now any Lithuanian students can go, uh, can log uh, on uh, the association page and find all the information in Lithuanian language. So your students can also go on this uh, website and find infor uh, information about the coronavirus and in your languages. But if you ca can't found, uh, find the language of your country, you can always send them information in your language. And of course, we can't live without the help of our volunteers. Uh, before the start of quarantine, uh, quarantine in Lithuania, our volunteers received uh, invitation to return to their countries but they stayed in Lithuania and followed uh, the quarantine rules uh, while staying at home. 
our connection with our volunteers did not end. They are actively involved in the preparation of tasks for our students. We prepare, um, we prepare a segment, uh, segments to learn English, theater, art. They join group meetings and communicate with uh, our students. So this is a few examples uh, of how we are involved in international life. Thank you, Achu. Thank you. That's excellent. Okay, so we are making you've you've done a brilliant job. Uh, you're five minutes ahead of schedule, uh, <laughs> and so Lena, you were going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, yeah advantages and disadvantages. You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, we are going through an exceptional, unique and dangerous situations. So I would like to talk about uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, this situation. Um, we have made many discoveries uh, during the special time. And the first our discovery is then that when you are sitting at home, it is very important to everyone to have timetable. It is important to, to students and to staff. It is important to get up in time, not to stay in the bed all the day. It is important to start the day in good mood for example, by making morning exercises via messenger. Uh, so it's important to devote time to work and to hobby. It is important to devote time to fun and to sport. And it is very important to be busy just to avoid bad habits like this. Second our discovery, thanks to COVID, we got to know each other differently. We visited each other homes, what we have never done before. We shared our best recipes. We enjoyed each other pets. We met each other's children, sisters, bros brothers, parents, grandparents. And we have met different attitudes, some very positive, some less positive. So some examples of positive attitudes. Uh, we are so happy uh, because our, most of our students are satisfied with all the tasks they are receiving. They enjoy chatting online, sharing lives, happy to learn new things. Families of our, of our students are helping them with IT and with home tasks, giving positive feedbacks. Uh, they are happy to chat with social workers and social workers say that now they became good, good friends with the moms, especially with the moms of our students. Our staff is super, super creative, super motivated, implementing new methods, sharing ideas, spending a lot of time for learning. People from outside offering help, companies donating protective materials, 
So we are meeting with a lot of a lot of positive and uh, positivity and support from outside. Yeah, it's pity, but we have few students who are not interested in e-learning. They do, do not want to connect uh, to the electronic communication networks. They avoid phone calls and etc. Uh, of course, few families of our students do not accept help do not uh, encourage the children to have um, to learn uh, uh, some families even ignoring social workers and they prefer to stay away from all the activities happening around and uh, it's pity we have few of staff who are afraid of challenges afraid of innovations not involved in air learning in air meetings um, and want what want to stay yeah in distance with all our activities uh, it's not easy but it is it's such situations around and uh, it's some uh, influence from outside we can feel because uh, we are getting uh, some controversial uh, information. Sometimes we getting fake news. So all those things little bit destroying some people and making them to be afraid. But we are analyzing the situations and the reasons. We are working hard to overcome all obstacles. Uh, we are happy just because most important that the biggest part of the community using the time for learning and making big plans for the future. And the future depends on what we do today. So what, what is our wish to everybody is that stay healthy and positive and everything will be okay well thank you fantastic thank you so much so uh, we have uh let me see we have plenty of time for questions which is excellent um so i have one question that i'm going to ask susanna's put a really good question in the chat which which i'll let susanna ask i think we can we can have the whole everybody can speak because we're not too rushed actually um but my question uh lena or anybody in the team is when you go back when we we talk in english about the end of lockdown what will you do differently because of what you've learned Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think um, one thing uh, maybe we will uh, leave it's uh, uh, mm, uh, se seminars for staff, uh, learning for staff. Uh, uh, I think it's a good idea when one uh, hour per week uh, all staff can learn something new it's 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 good and uh, this practice in quarantine time it um, show for us that it's very good for our staffs anybody else yeah can i say something uh, well we have learned that it it's very good tool to learn even uh, for our students and uh, uh, our families of our students. Like uh, um, Yeva says in her presentation that uh, our parents uh, got a lot, a lot of new skills. So, and we are uh, um, planning to keep sending uh, bills to family in e-format on online. Uh, we will try to 
to keep the uh, conversation uh, groups that they could uh, chat online in weekends or could evaluate uh, day uh, in evening that it's a quite good uh, tool for them and they are quite confident uh, to use this yes we're all learning about new technology aren't we Susanna, would you like to ask your questions? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, one is about the Don't Sit on the Sofa presentation. Um, is there a special app, a special application? Because you talk about the um, QR code and how, how does it work with um, if there's a special application or if you can do it in other way? Uh, Alita, should I answer? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, it's some QR codes we created for our students, and uh, um, it's uh, uh, all the exercises available on YouTube, and just uh, each student has individual exercise according his needs and abilities so it's uh, easy to do and our staff like Yolita and uh, Agle one more uh, of our colleagues they are quite professional to do this so if you want some advice how to do this or some learning how to how to create a QR code and how to connect this QR code with the um, exercise uh, in YouTube, it's possible to make some, uh, some one more learning, like practical learning how to do this. Because this, uh, this um, uh, method is very good, very, we can see the effectiveness of this method because you are receiving a, a reminder and you have to do this and you are getting points for doing the exercises so our students are competing not just with their friends but with themselves jumping out of sofa and making exercise in the certain time they are getting a reminder oh, okay thank you i had another question that is about the para paralim mart the, th something that Virmanta uh, talk about uh, this uh, can you can you explain a little more about this um, event uh, yeah um, where you saw this link um, I can send uh, if you want I can send you link and it's very interesting uh, um, website and uh, this group uh, where you can send uh, now in this moment uh, we have uh, um, this Lina Padekip Dabaraturi sorry I forget in English Dabar Yara Paskaltas Tas Konkursas yeah uh, now, now it is some competition, some competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that all disabled people could participate so your students they could participate uh, and you know the award is trip to japan yes <laughs> so so i suppose it's very motivated uh, mm. action that you if you want to visit japan so do something <laughs> Yeah, and you know we have some rules, of course, and you can you cannot send a lot of pictures, and uh, but uh, but uh, some students we can try for for us for our institu institution we second time in this competition it's very nice and uh, you get back some uh, feedback it's very uh, it's one motivated our students and yeah and, and uh, drawing something on. Uh, Peace uh, thematic. It's it's really very easy and just you, you need to make photo or scan this picture and uh, send uh, in this website 
and but you need to keep this picture because uh, they can ask you send the original uh, drawing picture and so and later we can use these pictures uh, in uh, different ways uh, in uh, some uh, bags uh, in, in yeah in some different uh, things so it's very nice okay thank you good and, job yes and the 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 extra details if you want to put that in writing we can add and what put links in or links about the use of the QR code that Alina was explaining, then we can put all of that on the page that we'll associate with this webinar recording so that everybody involved can go back to that page in a few days, but also other people will find it. I, I never heard of the, uh, um, the Paralim part as well. I think that's something lots of people will find interesting, isn't it? So uh, that's fantastic. Um, and we can share PowerPoint presentations somehow, if it's possible, then you can find all the links there, like for sport and for Paralim part. And yes, we'll, we, you've sent us the, I mean, you could, if you want to change any of it, you can do, but if you, everything you've sent, we'll upload to a program called SlideShare, which then we can put the code on the page and then you can see all the slides on the page or you can download. So we'll create that all on the one page that we've used for this program today. Um, Spiros has a question as well. Um, Spiros. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your excellent work. Uh, DDC and Simon for hosting the, the webinar. I mean, it, it, it's fantastic. Uh, it's really, really w w how I understand a day sender without walls should, should function. I just, I, um, I just wanted to, to ask because, well, to be honest, this uh, quarantine and the pandemic really caught us by surprise, at, at least, <laughs> you know, that's our case. And I think for most people that that was also true. I just wanted to ask if um, if you had uh, like um, a protocol. I mean, uh, all this fantastic work you you are doing right now. Uh, did, uh, did you had uh, some idea, some uh, some practices before that uh, that you? Um, updated uh, to be used during the pandemic? Yeah, so Lena, were you prepared already? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did, you have, did you receive a call by the bat? <laughs> we, are, we are using our creativity, imagination and other thing, <laughs> things to, to do something. And of course, uh, the situation in Lithuania is like uh, we cannot accept. We we work with uh, students uh, uh, who cannot stay at home because their parents are in emergency services. So we still have students who are coming here every day. So the staff working directly with such students are checked uh, um, uh, from time to time, uh, uh, ex how to say, make uh, exam, yeah, have exams, no? Yeah, tests. Tests, have tests. So, and we, we, we have to keep all the safe, uh, safety protocols, like, like safe, safety protocols. But of course, we are uh, visiting our students, uh, like you saw, uh, if they have birthdays, or if they are very sad and want to see some of the staff, we are running to their homes and waving through windows and sending virtual kisses, you know, to say that we are with you, we, we cannot meet, but we, we are like keeping the same spirit, we are in touch. So this is very important for our students to understand that uh, we we don't forget you. Uh, you will be back. 
someday because some of them even saying that maybe it's my fault maybe i did something wrong because i cannot go to the gdc anymore so they they are accepting this understanding the situation wrong so we are trying to to put them in right understanding of the situation i don't know if i answer your questions uh, I forgot what was the question. I think, I think you did. That there was no advanced protocol. You had to create the solution. I think that was the uh, that was fascinating. So we have still enough time. I'm just going to remind people that the if you want the certificate that Lena's created for this talk, the educational certificate, put your email in the chat box or email the hello at citizennetwork.org email, which is in the chat box, and we will send it to you. So that's just important if you want the certificate. Um, we have five minutes, and if we can take other questions, um, if anybody wants to raise their hand and just ask a question now that's in their mind. Has anybody got an, any other questions for Lena and the team? There's so many people now, I have to look all over the it's giant screen. I don't see anybody waving their hands. I don't see anything in the chat box. I just think we can finish this beautifully on time. Um, so I will just give an extra big thank you to the whole team. That was a fascinating presentation. Um, very, very clear, a very good use of English, very good use of images. Wonderful to see the use of technology developed so quickly in a crisis that none of us have been able to uh, prepare for, really, I don't think. Um, and um, and as, as Spiros says, a very good example of a day center without walls when suddenly the walls are disappearing or reappearing or moving and some of the walls are changing through technology some of the walls are being moved because of um, this um, trying to keep each other safe um, but people still thinking like a community still showing love and still taking care of each other and still trying to encourage the best out of each other so very much in the spirit of uh, Day Centre Without Walls. We will be working out what to do as our second webinar, I guess, in the next uh, few days. And um, so um, I don't think anybody should feel too intimidated, but it was quite intimidating because you did so well. You f filled up so much information and you did it so beautifully on time. So. As the host, I've got to say a big, big thank you because you made my job very, very, very easy indeed. Um, okay, so please put your email in. I'm not. Go I'm going to let you leave, so I don't artificially close the chat box too early. So please do use that. Um, but you can. You're free to now go and get a, a coffee or whatever, whatever your afternoon ritual is, or go off and. Uh, have a tea, a coffee, a cake, um, end your day or whatever, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much.